Madness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Is the time to roll up? Oh no, I know what y'all what what time. Pache, Pache. Pache. Oh yeah. Oh okay. All right. Okay, I know what time it is. What time it's is time. it? Party time. time. Peanut it's butter time. jelly. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. What? Oh no. The good is fuckery. Man, you raise it like crazy ass dance the peanut butter. <laughs> Crump Brian Wiggins. with the banana suit. <laughs> Crump Wiggins. Ain't but telling with the baseball bat. Now, there he go. There he go. There he go. There he go. Where he at? Where, he at? Where is he at? <laughs> All right. So, season two, episode 55, Good and Fuckery. Where good we and Fuckery! That nigga scared the shit out of me when he did that. <laughs> so, was we're gonna start it all with some hometown good here in the seven five seven. Um, Virginia native Pharrell Williams will deliver the keynote address to North State University, a hundred and seventh commencement exercise, which will honor the De- December graduates in the class of twenty twenty one. Just been out there. He just released That's fire. it. That's fine. Shout out to a Virginia legend, you know, going to a-, a, a Exclusive. Yeah, going, going for state, all right, respect. Yep, yep, yep. Now, um, I'm gonna go from one good to another fuckery. Oh. Um, better.com CEO what fires 900 employees over Zoom. Better.com CEO Vishal Garge I think that's how you say his name. His name sounds like a supervillain, to tell you the truth. His name is Vishal Garge. Announced. Yep. First name V I S H A L, last name G A R G. He sounds like a Guardians of the Galaxy villain. (laughs) But uh, Vishal Garge had the gall to announce. I see what you did there. <laughs> that the mortgage the mortgage company is laying off about nine nine percent of its workforce on a Zoom webinar Wednesday, abruptly informing the more than nine hundred employees on the call that they were being terminated just before the holidays. What this is the quote. Fucking monster, bro. Mm. This is the quote he says. Hold on, 900 people you just dropped off on a webinar? I already don't like webinars because they impersonal as fuck. Like, you can't even jump in the chat and say, man, you got to text your question. And if they feel like looking at it, then they see it. Like, it's just very impersonal as it is. So to just fire folk like that, like, (laughs) you can't even voice their opinion. It's just get the fuck up out of here, y'all. All All 900 Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. fuck shit. This this is how they- I don't like this. This is how they did it, though. The way they did it was so he he basically said on the call, if you're on this call, you are part of the unlucky group that is being laid off. Garge said on the call, a recording of which was viewed by CNN business. Your employment here is terminated effective immediately. He then said employees could expect an email from HR detailing the benefits and severance. Yeah, this. You cold this. blooded as hell, boy. God damn, Chief. It was that serious. Like it's one thing to do that. This companies do this all the time, but damn. on Zoom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's the equivalent question. of breaking up with like like sending like <laughs> sending send a mass text. Yeah, like or a mass email. If you are receiving this email, you have been fired. I would have rather you did that on some blind CC, so at least I'll, everybody ain't in my business and they don't know. I'm yeah, equivalent. Yeah, I ain't there no more. Like you ain't gotta put me out there on Front Street, bro. That's like ah, that's the damn. 
that's like texting your wife, I want a divorce and period. Like no, no explanation. And then emailing the divorce papers. Yeah. 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 See, that's why you that shit wife was crazy. Yeah, man. And that's the fuckery. Um, well, some some good coming up uh, is that there's a petition to stop interviewing Will and Jada Pickett. Smith has surpassed 20,000 signatures. Hell no. <laughs> Pat, your dream is coming true. You did this, mm-hmm. didn't you? You did this, didn't you? Maybe. I don't know. This, this, um, is, this is a Padawan work right here. It, he just said uh, this shit like two episodes ago. I can't take it. Jada and Will, if you want a conversation with Pat, you can come on the podcast and talk to him. <laughs> we ain't got no red table, though. Our table is, is black. I got a green table over here. That, too. We gonna well, not this week. Week. Just roll up green on it. Too. I'll have a green table later this week. <clears throat> You gonna support the pod? You come on here. You ain't no on the pod. Po- on a positive note for the Smith family, Will's new book is a, a it's, it's doing I do good. Wanna, I do want to read. It's a bestseller. It. It's eighty-seven thousand copies in the I first did. week. Our motherfucker is so, box book selling more than some niggas' albums. That's yeah, crazy. some of his albums. Let me stop. I do want to <laughs> read that book though. Like I've heard that is. A page yeah, page. I actually heard it was actually a good book to read, pretty much. So, I mean, it's Will Smith. Whatever. The only time he's stirred me wrong is in this mess, and it's not even his fault for the mess. So, I'll just leave it at that. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> wait. When's Jada book coming out? I don't care. Uh, she already got a show. We don't need, we don't need no show? more. What is that? What does it come on? What, what what channel is this shit coming on? It comes on a Facebook channel. Oh, hell no. So ain't nothing but my mama and them watching it. Interview. Now, like, um, it's on, um, I say it. it they put it on YouTube. Catch number YouTube clips. It's on Thriller yeah. TV. <laughs> what? Thriller? Like, oh, the people that do the boxing and shit? <laughs> <laughs> they did shit. It should be. It should be. But we'll talk about them later. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about them later. Um, next on the list, Drake withdraws from the 2021 Grammy Award nominations. Yeah, now I saw some about this like right before we got on tonight. What is that about? Well, um, well, it looks like I'll put it, it looked like um Kanye is getting uh is getting part of his wish because you know he was telling people they should just go ahead and just drop out of the the whole nominations and just give it to him pretty much but hey it looks like he got part of his wish but drake has been on a um in the past couple of years he's been like basically boycotting the grammys like he won um because he got nominated for hotline bling but he put it as a rap song but he doesn't rap in the song so he feels that they just put him in there because they didn't know where to put him because he's or because he's black. He couldn't figure out why. And then hey, the one year, he he actually got a um he actually got a Grammy or whatever. And um what, he what said was that year for? that hmm? what was the um, for? song of the year, artist of the year, best hip hop album, best pop album, best singing album. He uh 2019 he best best rap song for God's plan. Okay. And he had mm-hmm. what are you mad about. Well, um up there he was basically saying he's basically saying that the Grammys is racist the way so, they on. do things. He won the award. Walked up there and called them racist. What was it? Yeah, he, he did he didn't straight up say racist. Okay. But he's he basically said that the way they basically said the same thing how the creators. Yeah, basically. Okay. Like he he okay. uh, the way they that. judge things and the way they uh categorize things or whatever right. is is an outdated 
way of doing things and we need to do something new or whatever because you basically you kind of lump every all black music into the same same genre same category we're not a monolith on our music or our, or our culture or our personality um drake wants to be put in the correct category so it can be shown that he's beating the motherfucker that's in their category you feel me? like drake want to be put in the r&b category because he was singing so he want to show that he can be r&b i mean i understand it from a I want to conquer. I want to be the best in everything I do. Don't just put me in this one category. Don't humdrum me. Give us our, 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 our correct classifications and what we're doing with our music because you put Eminem in different. You put him in pop. You put him in hip hop as well. You'll do the same thing for another another culture. But when it comes to majority of the the hip hop artists is trying to cross over or just make other types of music and they, they ain't just urban, as they say, which means black or ain't just hip hop which they just mean black, put it in mm -hmm. a category so we can be seen in this genre and it can be seen that we're actually making the money like these other people are doing. We're actually making the same achievement these other people are doing. We're actually beating these other people in their, in their own game. With mm -hmm. our so, I mean, I can understand it, but at the end of the day, like, are you really yeah. going to make headway? Are you really going to make any changes with just you doing it? That's real. Well, I, I, think, I think it's the point, though, if, if Drake, who is arguably the biggest artist on the planet, pretty much, or whatever, says, hey, the biggest award platform for music is full of shit, then more people gonna follow suit. Because- I'm gonna still follow the race because I'm gonna say it ain't shit gonna change to somebody like Billie Eilish say that shit. That's true, that's true. There you that's go. That's true, but- because like I mean, yeah. just on if you're trying to change something because you don't like the classification because you think it's black, look at every other struggle. We struggle by ourselves, shit don't change. We get a little participation in for somebody you know else, like shit starts to change. Raise the fucking prestige of the BET award. Then you can win your award and whatever genre you want them to make. And it'll be our shit. But we keep looking at somebody who don't understand our culture to give acceptance to some from our culture. It don't make sense. Yeah, as long as the BET Awards ain't owned by Viacom, because then we're back in the same situation all over again. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like Greg, I feel like Drake is in the right sensibility by saying this stuff. Just the way he like says certain things, because he was saying more like, if you already won, the people and they singing the songs word for word, you already won. If they're singing your singing it in your hometown, you're already winning. You know what I'm saying? It's more like the Grammys, the Grammys are not up to date. They don't know what's going on. They're behind, whatever. Because you'll see that I like that the Grammys that shit ain't, ain't for the Grammys. Ain't for us. That's for them. So I mean yeah. like me, I give two shits what the Grammys do because I don't even watch that bitch. I don't watch. I watch no award shows because me personally, I don't see the the, the reason they have an award show. Want to highlight somebody getting they, their achievement for making money and they, and they talent, but you don't do that for other shit. I mean, if you're gonna do this for some shit like that, that's superficial to me. Do it for some shit that people really really matter. Give award shows for regular motherfucker jobs, regular mm -hmm. everyday jobs. Now you win every award. This amount of time, we're gonna bring you up here. Hey, coming up to the stage for doing the best work in eight hour shift, Zach from Minneapolis. <laughs> Do some shit was, like that. I hear about Drake and his best song in hour. Like, Zach, I hear on the on the I don't Fuck these celebrities. I mean, just, just me personally. I mean, hey, take it as but I don't need to be on TV helping you celebrate your greatness. You already got the money for the shit. Now you want another award plus another bonus on top of that shit? Plus me watching you celebrate getting your shit? I don't give a fuck about you getting your award. Drake didn't come to my high school when I got my motherfucking awards. You know, it. the funny, the ironic thing about it is the way you feel about him saying that is how I feel Drake feels about the Grammys. <laughs> on, on, on funny I shit. Like but, but... At the end of the day. Oh, go ahead. No, I would say, yeah, but yeah, that's it. Pretty much. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was just going Yeah. Fuck them goddamn, goddamn awards shows, man. <laughs> that's it. That's it.
the BET, the MTV, the Oscars, the, the CMAs, the the poem, the poem, all of them goddamn award shows. Fuck them all. Fuck all of them goddamn award shows. That's the one I really don't understand. The porn awards. Well, you got you got awards for best anal scene, bitch. Come on, bitch, bitch. Come on, for real. hold on. Let me get back on the screen for this shit. Come on, literally, bitch. Come on, <laughs> bitch. Come best on. anal. That's a that's our awards you win. Pun intended. And you got a you, you got a trophy for shit, this shit. Best anal, and you put in the same shelf somebody else got with their best rap app, album of the year. You put both of them on the same shelf. Come on, bitch. The fuck out of here with these stupid ass superficial awards, man. Awards didn't mean shit after you got out of school. Everything else, you've grown. Award yourself. Your award is your money. Your award is your check. Your award is being able to do what you need to do for your fucking family. I don't even know what the fuck you're doing. You're a celebrity. I see you enough. Go somewhere. And if it's the point awards, you definitely see them enough. <laughs> Problem, they ain't going nowhere, they just come. But um, that's that's how they had their legs up with the hands. <laughs> this award, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm this is my pretty pain. You feel me? I'm sorry, take away from the good in front of me, but fuck award shows. You feel me? Like, I just don't understand them. Fuck them. Fuck award shows and fuck fuck award shows. But you can't you can't apologize for that if this is the good and fuckery because we're always saying it's fuck award shows and talk about fucking awards, award shows. So like it's all part of the fuckery. This is the part where we can express fuckery. <laughs> but going forward. <laughs> Oh man, some more fuckery is debt collectors can now contact you on social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can. They they can only DM you. They can't do it publicly. Well, if y'all see a DM that look funny, man, I don't have that shit. Yeah, oh, that's where I don't social media. Like you, you it's just treated like robocalls. Those forex traders that be trying to give you friend requests. But, uh, the, the, the porn them. site robots, the prince and princess from Nigeria that's trying to invite you to I'm some type of... All my calls. Shit. If I don't know your number, I'm screening your calls. I pick up and say, we're going to pizza if I want to. Shit. The, the, the car that. warranty. Yes, I had my phone forwarded and all my calls went right to Pizza Hut in Petersburg. So, mm. If you ever went to Petersburg, somebody called a little face. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a pepperoni? What? But man, I I just wanted to put that out there, man. If you start seeing them like Yo, people trying to just this has do, got do conversations. Like, how do you pass like legislation to stop robocalls, but then you allow this? Like it's like an ever-ending story of like, hey, we're gonna keep calling you. What is the purpose of the debt? Like you're not coming to actually collect anything. So if I did not have it when you called last, what <coughs> makes you think that if I'll I explain it to you. Now that I oh, like, I you think Face got it. You can call me right now. I'm either going to pay you. I was about to say. Either have it or I don't. I think well, Face got it. As a former debt collector myself, <laughs> I'll explain why, why, they, why we used to do that. Um, and the point of the continuous calls is at a certain point legally, if we don't, they have no precedence on it. You know I mean? It's like you you trying to follow up on something that, that's yours. And if you know, somebody can actually get away with it. Um, as far as just for like credit, change my number. If you change all your numbers and people can't contact you and your debt go for seven years, in some states, you don't owe that debt no more. So that's why people are persistent on calling. Some people do third parties and they get somebody else to call you for the company I used to work with. I used to call the other place. My man, call this number for me, man. They'll answer for you. They don't know your number. And once you pick up the phone, uh, we got you. Because once we sell your shit, if we can prove that we called you, you have no claims in none of your property no more. Because we have we've done our due diligence. But if we've never called and on no record it shows a call, legally we're liable for that. 
So that's why they have to, certain companies have to make those certain calls and, and by, by so many weeks. But for some companies, you only get the calls for up to 50 something days um, after the debt becomes delinquent. And then they may stop calling you all of a sudden. And then you get a phone call from a different company because that company has already went to their limits to try to do it. Now they have sold your debt to another company, which in some places, some cases, you can get just some other conversations with selling your debt. That ain't right either. So, but the reason why I do follow up on so many calls is like property management will say you rented some shit or something like that is because they come in for their shit after them calls stop or they gonna sell your shit after them calls stop. They just give you so many calls to try to give you a chance to actually say, well, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. And most business players, as long as you tell them, I'm trying to, or you give them some type of story for them to put notes in, all they want is something to type in. You feel me? Like, we don't, mm-hmm. I, I never want to call people like that. You got to get on my nerve. I used to see the same number. I'm like, hey, I'm going to call this person two days ago. Fuck, I don't want to call this motherfucking person. Shit. But got to pick the phone number. Hey, how you doing? And that's just it. <laughs> so, but it's, it was even more annoying for me when I when I was a bill collector and bill collectors was calling me. So. so the advice you would give to our listeners would be to pick up the phone if the debt collector calls and just tell them something. At least talk to them. Yeah. If people calling you, man, bill collectors calling you, just pick up the phone one time. Just tell them, look, man, I ain't got it right now. They're going to try to offer you to make a payment then. Look, I ain't got it right now. And all, all honesty, with most bills, as long as you give them at least $5, they'll leave the fuck alone. <laughs> Set up a payment plan for $5 if y'all want to, man. Take it from face, man. I can tell you how you can pass some bills and shit. As a bill collector and as a... <laughs> just me. Because I got bills, too, so... Um, I get past my own. So... Um, you heard it here first, folks. As a former oh. debt collector, if I was calling you and I needed your money, um, if I offered you an arrangement, the best thing we do is that, yeah, I would like an arrangement and just talk the arrangement. I think it's best suit, best suited to you on your basis because at no point uh, is the company willing to just like not get no money from you. As long as you're paying something continuously, they're like, all right, you can get, give a company $2 a month or I can afford $2 a month. I ain't got no money. I'm broke. Like, well, can you do 25 No, I can do two. Okay, sir. Well, we'll be taking the money on this day. Cool. Well, that's from a joke to a You can afford more, pay a little bit more, pay a little bit more. But you got to pay something. You can't dodge debt forever. I, please believe me. It, but you can. You can. You can. Like I just said, seven years and you know, but hey, get this dodge dodge seven years. You know, like to, to successfully dodge all your debt, well, you, go seven years. you will have to change a bunch of shit. You change your phone number, change your address because if it's a previous address and you move back to the previous address, please believe me, they will find your information Nigga, if, if your information is in any, in de- any data system bill collectors can and will find your shit you'd be surprised the technology and the shit is at their fingertips to get to you so they call they answer me i'll give you two dollars a month man. Two um, five. I, i'll add on to this um along with that is social media and you know those people with the ppp loans that so you know you're doing your your money, um, your money phones and stuff, they looking at that. If you flossing real hard or taking some trips on your Instagram, they're looking at that. And Only it's provisional just, property. Mm-hmm. And it's just gonna be just like the homie that sees you on a vacation and you owe them money. They're gonna hit you up just like that. So just like the hip hop police listen to listening in the lyrics, they're hip they're hip hop policing with debt. Pretty much. You on the beach and you owe me money, man. Give me this goddamn <clears throat> time. Give me this time. Shit. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, speaking of hip hop and policing and uh, <laughs> in general, guess it's time we will get into the versus part of the good and fuckery, y'all, man. Bone Thugs yeah. and Harmony versus Three Whoa! Six Mafia. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Best <laughs> versus <laughs> ever. <laughs> And I said it, and I don't care what nobody else thinks. I said it. Best verses of this shit had me about to throw up a table through the wall. I was in here about to drop, hit the garage door. Like I had my wife scared because I had the headphones on. So she just see me wilding, but she don't hear. I, I was scared for her. When... Oh man. <laughs> you said you about to fight somebody because they were it playing something. I was like, it got real, man. I was I about to headbutt through the drywall. It was about to get real in here, bro. That was the best verses of man. 
So, um, reaction. You seen it yet, Pace? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, predictions. Who? Did, well, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I just I was going with 3-6 anyway or whatever. I had predicted 3-6 to win. I, I, I'm just, you know, we all know why it's in between us. But for the people that don't know, pretty much 3-6 reign supreme in our college years here in Virginia from the 804 to the 75 to the DC. I don't know, maybe Roanoke too. Yeah. God damn. Reign supreme. Niggas was raging off 3-6 from high school all the way through college. Like, that was just the red. Like, you want to beat somebody ass, you want to get fucked up, you want to wild out. They was the soundtrack you needed, man. Like they were, they was gonna hit no matter what. Them and Lil John, yo. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. Them on, you gonna, you gonna get some. You gonna, you gonna get active that evening. Okay. Well, this, yeah, this, this definitely was a good one, man. It's just like, and I would say, what they had most guests, they had like. I don't know, man. It just felt like it was all around the suspense. Like what you was expecting to happen in the Jeezy and Gucci happened here. Like who did y'all have winning? <laughs> Me, it was three six. I was, I went in three six. Okay. Just because I like three six like that. You went in with three six and you came out with three six. Went in three six, went in, came out three six. I was just okay. three six all the way. What about you, Faith? <clears throat> um Nigga, I'm from NATO folk. <laughs> you see me in high school, middle school. I throw them bowls. I, I like to harmonize as well sometimes, but you can't put up boom, 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 boom to tear the club up, nigga, tear the club. You cannot. No, I'd rather tell the That was the story of the evening. I think it was the energy, bro. Like, uh huh. If you go on paper, right? Job, if you look at it on paper, Bone Thug had as many hits as 3 6. Like, they was pretty even in that. But it was the energy of Bone's song <coughs> followed by the energy of 3 6's song. And the energy was just. Man, yo. They man, started man, a fight. Man, yo. 3 6. We man. run it. Man. We run it. We run it. When they started the night off, though, with. Tie the club up, nigga. Tie the club. I was like, oh, oh we starting off. Already. Whoop a nigga ass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, I knew from the jump before the bottle, before we get to the, 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 the incident. The fuckery. I knew some shit was going to jump off. I was like, oh, we starting on this energy. Like, this is where <laughs> we started. So I'm like, okay. So I know what, cat, what part of the catalog y'all bring it out now, because that means y'all going up from here. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Now, mind you, mind you, Face could still lean on the Bone Thugs way because Bone Thugs is a smoker, stoner music. Also, I, ain't gonna lie. But, I was definitely into the Bone Thugs too. Like it was, it was a, <coughs> it was a full night of just like it was, it was like a dream concert type shit for me. Like, you know how the rest of they got dream matches and shit. Like, yeah, it was like a dream matchup for like. uh Hip hop for me, like it was just two groups that, like, I it really like no matter who I had winning, they both would have won to me anyway. Yeah, I, I rock with them both so hard. Like the fans won. Yeah, they could have. They ain't even had to perform. They could have just pushed play on <clears> the <throat> albums, and I would have just sat in this bitch and just snapped. So they already had me, but I definitely had uh, three six. It was the energy, man. Like I think in these verses, people got to start thinking about. For one, who they're gonna go up against as far as like who energy match. Like you might not do uh-huh. the same exact <clears throat> topic matter, but you want the energies to match. Like Soldier Boy might have been talking about shooting a gun, Bawa might have been talking about kissing a girl, but their the energies energy. match. You feel me? Like it was a similar vibe all night. With Bone Thugs, it's so smooth, some of their shit. It's like <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and that juxtaposition just makes it look bad. You know, it just it 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 does feel it did feel weird when like like you should have won the Pacacon. 
You said what? Bone thugs that went against Shaka Khan. Oh, this guy, this guy. But it it did well, feel folks, weird. We had a really good show this evening, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just fucking. Like, yeah. It it did it feel weird shot. when you you, you getting it's off that height. The fire to the limit through the wall. <laughs> Damn. And I miss my uncle George. She oh, just had a um a versus, I believe. Now that, I now that I think about it, Shaka Khan. But but back to the story at hand. Um, it's crucial conflict. <laughs> True. But um dang, that threw me so off. But it, it did feel weird. Tony that, Te- uh, what, what's the nigga Tony? What's the nigga from uh Terror Squad? Tony Sunshine. Tony Sunshine? Oh god. No, I love it. my desert ego. Yeah, we wrote <laughs> my shot drink out every day. <laughs> hey, hey. But yeah, it, it feel weird when you get off the heightness of like ass and titties and the next thing you know, they start singing like Days of Our Lives or those This is the ex- funniest part, yo. Oh, days of our lives. Niggas came off. Okay, okay. We ain't got to it yet, but let's talk about it. After the bottle throw, after the, the, the scuffle, kerfuffle fight, how do you come back on stage and go straight into ass and titties, yo? That was the funniest shit to me. <laughs> Isn't that real life? Isn't that what you want in real life? You know, they well, they say this was like I, this was kind of a mismatch because of the vibes and everything, but they mm-hmm. actually got history with each other. Like it was a point mm-hmm. where they were beefing and they had this like tension or whatever. So this is kind of like like I said earlier, like Jeezy and Gucci. Or whatever, where we have the verses as the new Switzerland for hip hop. Where Busy Bone need to stay off that narcotic. Hey, hey, before we even get started, you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be mocking me while I'm on motherfucking stage. Like straight the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Is what is what it is. It's what Gangsta Boo said. Yes, she said a lot. Now you had Jeezy and them dissing dead homies and shit, and now one person threw a blow. Uh uh-uh. uh. This nigga was imitating you while you were on stage in a versus battle and you threw a bottle? Get off that shit, bro. Leave that booger shit alone, bro. I hate to say this, but Busy Bone did some very stereotypical light skin shit that day. He almost ruined the whole damn shit. He almost ruined the best ever because he wanted to get mad and have an ego. Fuck out now, of here, man. You look crazy as hell on some of that shit after them niggas just mm-hmm. throw the club up and then you come over there singing like you on the street corner with a bottle of wine and a and a barrel with a fire in it. Looking like mm-hmm. Gerald Laverne the intro of New Jack City. Living just I will, I'll, I'll give Busy, I'm going to give Busy his props. <laughs> Just enough for the city. <laughs> this guy. But I will give Busy his props. Like him, him and Crazy, they like both, like they knew their lyrics, like, like clockwork. Like they... Like when they needed busy to say his lines or whatever, they just got him. They pressed the button. They went off or whatever. He did what he had to do, and then they got him. But going back to that situation, man, like, man. yeah, he did some stereotypical light skin shit. That, the fact hey yo, hey hey yo, hey hey. Before we even get started, you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be mocking me while I'm on motherfucking stage. Like straight the fuck up. Nigga, stuck my dick. And gangsta boo. Fuck 
basketball and I hate them. CC ass nigga, what the fuck wrong with you? That shit DJ Paul was in there throwing that little arm, boy. He was the first one. And like one of the first like, ones. Paul, if you don't get your little arm up, man, if you don't get up out of there with that. It's not strong. Oh, Paul said he got that one hit of quitter. That one hit of quitter. Don't you throw that little motherfucker no more. It's my strong hand. Grab my strong hand. <laughs> Say he got that one hit of quitter. Oh, you know what? You know what DJ Paul, like Fat Joe straight up asked him in the recap, like, oh, Paul, um, <laughs> I, now, I don't know the whatever the scientific way of saying it, man. Look, man, you only got one arm and you're the first one punching. Like, that's what Fat Joe said. Can't like, gangsta, DJ Paul said, you know, you know, you know, I understand, but I come from, he like, he comes from logic of when God takes something away from you, he gives you a strong ass you. two knuckles that you can hammer the <laughs> shit out of nigga with. Yeah, <laughs> like, and he said he's been known in high. He said in high school they already know I got that one hit of quitter, whatever. And that, he he tested it that night. He tested it that night, man. I, I will say though, so, so before <clears throat> when the shit jumped off, this is look like uh, uh uh I got on this thriller jacket. Do I like? Oh, first first of all, I want to say this: Juicy J looked like a straight up like James Bond action figure. It's, like action you hero. No, the and cool outfits, Juicy J. Tank. DJ Paul looked like like a super villain. DJ Paul looked like the black boss villain in Fatal Fury. It was like <laughs> he looked he looked like the stereotypical black boss that Hadouken! you see. Hadouken! <laughs> that you see in like Def Jam Vendetta. <laughs> I thought that he's straight up. I was some choreography or something. I thought he was gonna give me some Jackie Wilson moves. And they was gonna throw the cape around him and bring him back on stage. I, <coughs> I, I didn't know what was happening with his outfit. No, but that shit like was, he was ready ice great. skate more than perform, but God bless. Him. Yeah, I thought they motherfuckers ain't gonna be mocking me while I'm up here doing my thing. <laughs> and then and then Juicy J responded, What's up, my dick? And then he threw the mic. Now then that's I will say, now I will say you you can't do I, that. anytime anytime depending on the person whoever you are whoever they how they bring um how however they were brought up or whatever some people may be able to take that and just respond with another witty retort retort but in man law not in public when you invite you someone not that like, and, like that's like what law. you say to somebody when you are like at the point of like I have no respect for you. Like, mm -hmm. even if you arguing with somebody, like, or you don't like somebody, like you could have said a bunch of other shit, but you went straight to that. Uh, that's Juicy J, man. And I, I can see Juicy J just saying that uh, without like him like thinking too much about it. As he said it and stepped into the middle, I was like, oh, some that, <clears> that yellow tape about to get broken right now. And it did. And it did. It did. Country Black started running in. And, and, you know and Gangsta to catch a body for everybody. And, and Gangsta Boo was just talking mash. Like, you know, Gangsta Boo was the funniest person of the show. She was the like the, the MC. Because she was like sliding. Oh, you go do that to a girl. I, she was talking cash shit. Uh huh. Too much cash. Here. Too much cash. Here. But all in all, Best I feel like. Versus ever though. The, 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 can we talk about the guest? Yeah, that's. That's what I'm about to get into. The flow of the guests, how strategically they put the guests together or whatever, like back to back. Like it started off, well, well, the first surprise guest was Busy Bone. Cause nobody Indeed. thought Busy Indeed. Bone was gonna be there. Like, so he was the first surprise guest. <laughs> that was definitely the first shock of the night because I did not expect it. The next one was Lil Flip. 
pride of spinners. Yes. yes, I wasn't mad at it either. Like, even though <clears throat> Rippa, his his raps don't age very well, but <laughs> what I will say is. I enjoy seeing him. Like I, it, it's he's been away long enough that I was able to miss him. I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah flipper. <clears throat> it got me hyped. No. I was like, okay, we gonna have one of these tonight. All right, we bringing out the big. Guys. Even like, he like did a like a little freestyle at the end. I was like, yeah, you know what, flip. Yeah, that was hard. And I, me, I was on the Ti side of a little flipping Ti beef. So absolutely. But that verse he did that night, it was actually all right. Well, so that was Ryder Spinners. The the next guest was uh Lil Easy. For the love of Monday. And that had to been that had that to been hard. crazy. That was that was the that, point when I started fast. Cause it was like boom, then boom. <clears throat> and then you was like, Yeah, just wait, and there's more. And I was like, where where, where are you gonna go from having Lil Easy perform his dad's lyrics like that? And killing that shit. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a simple fact. They're in Cali. So you're in Cali. You're in your hometown. You're the son of Easy E. You're doing your dad's lyrics, pretty much, with the with the group that your dad put on. Yeah, it was that was a that was a big moment. That that had to be one of moment. the greatest for experiences for, for, uh, for a lot of ever. Big moment. Yeah. So next. Chameleon there comes out riding dirty. That's um, Chame- comes out of his tech bubble at somewhere in Silicon Valley and pops up. Mm-hmm. Who's seen him in years? Mm-hmm. And he flowed his rhyme perfectly. Yeah. Like like he just laid it down yesterday. Yes, he after did. after doing a major tech deal, he came in on the verses. <laughs> came in rich as fuck. And Straight from Silicon Valley. And then and then Crazy Bone came in and killed his. Sh- like Crazy Bone killed it every single time. Man, well, Crazy Bone has always been my favorite anyway. I think Lazy Bone was mine. Like, I crazy think Crazy can flow his ass <clears throat> off, and the tone of his voice make everything he say sound cool as fuck. But been in this round. So they counter. Did it bring it bring it on. down. Then they count, and Juicy J come out. When Juicy J come out, he brings the strippers. He brings the bag for the money. Strippers. <clears throat> and um, Mike Wills, strippers. And Lil Wayne comes out. Yeah. Now this is this is what blew the house off because I did not expect Recluse Wayne to come out. Nobody. Could do. Like I was like. They this actually the one moment when I wasn't out like his jumping face. around or nothing. I was just sitting there like, they got this nigga out of the house. Can you imagine how much they had to pay this nigga to get him out the house? Mm. Well, what they said, uh, well, and I don't then know, he, he was slick with it. Like everybody else was staying up on the stage, kind of hanging. That nigga came out, did his verse, gave his dap, and took some pictures and walked the fuck on. Now they say, <laughs> they say Lil Wayne did that. Well, Juicy J, he said in it. <laughs> that uh, Lil Wayne said that, you know what, if it was anybody else, I wouldn't think about it, but for you, Juice, because they known each other for a long time, since he was a kid, uh, evidently, that he came right on out. So that's, that's actually, that's, that's, that's pretty that's big. So he came out. So what do they do, Bone, to counter that? They bring out Lil John. <laughs> And it went up a notch. And then I wanted to throw the TV out the door. It went up a notch. It got ugly in here after that. Like, from there, the rest of the show, it was ugly. I was like, boy, so much shit almost got broke that that night, boy. It was bad. Already up. Since since we was like 20-something champs. What? (laughs) Yeah. Boy. It was a, a web, a web jam night up in here. Mm. Like, no, matter of fact, face. I don't know if you remember. House of Blue. Back, it was like the Civic Center. Mm. Like just rowdy and just ah, like it was ugly in here. <clears throat> Speaking of rowdy, 
And uh, next person to pop out, Project Pat. And he came out tonight talk. Oh man, I wish they had to just went into uh the streets and let him finish his whole verse. Mm-hmm. That verse is so hard to me, yo. Oh my god. I gotta go uh, streets. I want to go through the streets. I wanna, I wanna say Project Pack looked mad clean that night, man. Oh, yeah. Like pa- Project Pack, he, 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 yes, he got his teeth fixed and everything. Yes, teeth fixed. Out here. So he don't look crazy. He oh, looked like you seen him on Vlad. I have a, I don't really he got some Vlad interviews that came out before this drop. So I had seen him already, but yeah, he, he came out looking like a fucking Gucci man. Man, he tall as a big ass. Like he looked clean. Yeah, like he like, looked like somebody security guard. I thought it was security. He ain't got his health together. Project Pet, huh? Project Pet got his like, health. Like he don't look overweight or nothing. He, oh, he look we be on some twink. Get found. Thank you, thank you. Like Project Pat when he came out was fat. When Chick- this dude looked like he, pipe, he hit the pipe. gym. Big diamond rings on my pinky, pinky. Oh, Project Pat, huh? Oh, keep my stuff here. It's falling into my pocket. You know what's crazy about three six? Their guests bring out guests. So their guest Project Pat Boy, brings this out the one. The I, I would <laughs> never guess we would have seen. We had everybody on the on the stage from the original three six except for uh Florida. That shit was mm-hmm. epic as fuck. Cause I don't consider Kuzla Nika like one of the originals. Like I consider him an mm-hmm. asshole over the years, but that was epic as fuck. Mm-hmm. The whole three six all on stage together, cool, chilling, like because you know they done <laughs> turmoil in, in a turmoil for the past few years. That's true. That is true. I, I, that, 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 I don't know if they know how epic it was for a brother like me, but yeah. No, nah, they they know. They sound like they had more fun. They sounded like the fans when you when I heard the um, interview behind it, pretty much. So after this, after this, Bone had to hit him with a nuclear missile, and it was thuggish, thuggish, Bone, and they brought out Shatasha Williams. And Tasha mm. Cleveland definitely in the house. Boy, I ain't heard from Tasha since the original music video. I ain't seen okay. her on nothing since the original music video. Back in, what was that, 92, 93? Mm-hmm. When she came out, I was like, hold up. It's I was like, I got Tasha! <laughs> they win. They win because I know it was she was the hardest to find. Yeah, boy, that was I know it. Thank you, Bone Thugs. You did right by that. You you could you had to bring her out for that song because she makes that song like they do their thing on it. But if you took all of their verses and just compressed just her stuff together, I would listen to that on repeat. Like she yeah. crushed that song. She sung yeah. the fuck out of that thuggish ruggish bone. Goddamn it. Yeah, like that's one of those songs that you can always remember. Like that's one of those songs that you you'll remember and in like in normal conversation you'll like use that as a joke or something or something oh, like that. Just, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it that's how that's how you. common the show Play that that um Play song is. Fizzy's in the house. Fizzy's in the house. And play. And Tasha. <laughs> Cleveland. Definitely in the house. All she was doing is singing people's names and but saying they were in the house. Go. But, but it was a lot go better than. That was God right damn, back Tasha, from thank you. these songs. And she sounded just like the original track. So well, 20 some odd years country. later, 30 years later. Well, if you ain't saying nothing since then, you should. This nigga face. Shit, be real. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. It's the part of the podcast, nigga. We real. I'm done, nigga. <laughs> You got a point, man. You got a point. You got a point. Shit. 
What other Tasha? When the hell else you heard her sing something instead of Thug and Rolling Bone? Never. Again, I ain't heard from her since the original. Her voice better be the exact same. When it premiered, mm. that was the last time I saw Tasha. Mm. From then, mm. it was just Bone Thug. And, and what funny is, when, she, when they first came out, I thought her, she was Harmony. I thought they was Bone Thug <laughs> and she was Harmony, and they was all one big group. So when they first came out and Makes I first sense. saw the original video, I'm sitting at home. I think I thought of kid. that too. I'm sitting at home as a 10 year old kid looking at the TV like, oh damn, that's man, this gonna be a dope ass group right here. They got her killing the vocals. These niggas can rap their ass off. The fast rap wasn't like, like it was like them and DOS effects at the time. And not really a lot of people was doing that at that fast. So it was like new kind of fresh. I was like, this gonna go no, out. Then everything else after that ain't have her on it. No, I was like, damn. So how they bone thug the harmony and just kicked harmony out the group. How many? Now grits? my dumb ass heard her say and Tasha, but I just assumed that her like thug name was harmony. Like they was bone thug. <laughs> they was really with that. Boy, I was a yeah, yeah. It was bad. Her street name is harmony. <laughs> that, man, you know, because that's what she bring to the group. You know what I'm saying? She bring the harmony to the group with her vocals. You know what I'm saying? And she even them out. Like, you got the streets. And you got her coming. Yeah, with the and and that's you it. mix them together. That's the harmony. You see, that? Like that's harmony grits. Thugs, and she's the harmony. Nobody talking about Otis. Otis? I'm, I'm joking. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next guest. Crunky dead, crunky dead, crunky. Yo, Deuce, I ain't gonna even front, yo. Deuce was going in. Yeah, he, he would had, dance his ass off. He was killing that shit. My wife was looking at me like, what the fuck are you in here doing? I'm in here. I'm in here. Like, I didn't even remember the dude's name until like, he said it in the in the chat. Boy, I was <clears throat> loose. You were, oh man, you was my only refuge, man, because my wife was in here looking at me like, because mind you, all she sees, she don't hear nothing. All she sees is this. <laughs> for, the, for the pod squatters out there, that's also what we saw when we went out <laughs> with him to the clubs in our college year. I don't remember that shit. I'll be real. I don't, I don't remember a lot of them party. I had he don't remember that. that because he was smoking and no. I was That's drinking heavy back then too. It, it, drinking. We was a doing lot. a lot back then. Um, Wrist crap. That made nights not that memorable. I was doing all that shit. Oh, that. Just, um, the little one in the crowd. Oh, 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 the cocaine acro days. Yeah. There was a lot that was the color of my acro. White. Yeah, y'all don't get that confused. Won't nobody doing the cocaine. No, it was just the color of the acro. No, it was just liquor and weed. Ain't no sniffles around. There was a lot of other stuff <laughs> outside of that going on a lot. I enjoyed parties and back, getting in even back rooms at people's parties and shit. Yeah, there was a lot going on. And in these parties, we, they played three six. <laughs> a lot of people got their ass scooted across the floor. Mm -hmm. I was, and I was slim back then. I was like maybe a buck sixty. So you know, everybody would underestimate all us because we come in all slim and we ain't got nobody like really tall and, and, and shit like that. But truly, and then next thing you know, <laughs> you got big football players and shit getting swept off their fucking feet. Get your ass I off. bet you won't. Get your ass off. Get them. Them. Your ass I, off me. Get the fuck out of here. I, I, remember, I remember more fights started off that. And it wasn't because like niggas was trying to try other people. It was because they would get mad because they couldn't move me and then they would fall or something. And then they would get up and get pissed. Like, dude, like, dude nigga, we're all pushing. It's just I have a very solid foundation and I have I know leverage. So if you come over here to push me, I'm going to put you on the floor. I'm sorry. I I strengthen your leg. No, hit don't don't skip leg day. I don't know, nigga. <laughs> but hey. It's, 
I bet you won't. Oh, yo, don't bet me. I won't hit a motherfucker. Yes, I will. <laughs> no, that that was a good bet. Um, that was that was a good bet. It, I think I actually it bet it on him one time. <laughs> I enjoy. I, I I thoroughly. I, it's I weird. I, I don't like the shit that comes around with it, but I thoroughly enjoy fights. Like it's just fun. Like I used no. to go out and like even if I was gonna chill, I'd be like, I can't wait to see this. I can get into some shit that I can get all the way to. I know you go to. And, 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 and the good part is, I always wrote. We always had Chewy with us, so I was like, well, if I don't do it, I know before the end of the night he going. He Goku and Vegeta. So one of us gonna have to, you know, call in the cavalry, and we gonna get to whoop some that ass. And it didn't fail me many times. And the funny part would be you would go straight from like whipping people's ass and then you go like to like an after party and be in there getting it in on another type of level. Fighting the fuck. And that was the third day. It was a very, yeah, it was a very weird time. But that was third day. Taking that shit, I was, the, I was always. It was an air day. Just every time they went out, not air day. But. Hence why the next person to, uh, graduate from college from the age of 17 all the way to the age of 32, folks. Mm. No, actually, 34. Hey, you got it, though. It took me about five, six of those colleges to. Mm. I keep doing the face smile. I figure if I do that after everything, you know, <laughs> okay. Uh, what I was going to say, because I know we're going to get late too. But um, speaking of error day, Wiz Khalifa also came out. <laughs> this nigga in his, in his Maybelline model smile. I didn't care for the uh, Wiz Khalifa part. I'm be honest with you. I, I didn't really care about that song. I didn't care about his verse on it. Honestly. Yeah. I, I, yeah, but I don't no, have nothing else to say about it. Wiz Khalifa is uh, Juicy J new nephew, so they came out. But I got the Taylor but, Gang, you know, connection. But yeah. the person, the, the the main people that came out is the next few people I'm talking about. Stay Fly came on, and then it was then Young Buck came out, and Eight Ball and MJG. And I don't give a fuck about Young Buck, but you know, Eight Ball and MJG. You know. You know. Now at this point, this is when it started to get into like headbutt and drywall about to run out the garage door while it's closed type shit. At this point, I'm in here about to flip this table, dude. Like it was getting horribly ugly in this house. Like I was in this bitch wilding. Still with the headphones on, completely silent to the outside world, but acting a donkey. Oh my God, when that nigga MJG came in, in bold, MJG. Oh my God, nigga! In the morning, when I need a, oh! it's like that verse right there gets you charged up. Like I can feel like the power rising in me, and like, come man. Oh man, dude, dude! If if there was ever a such thing as like a human being being able to throw a fireball, I would have did it right there. It would it would have shot. I've been like, trying. My cheek, my cheek would have been that electrified. Like I was in this bitch losing it, bro. Losing it, man. That was like my crunk dream, man. Crunk ain't dead. Crunk ain't dead. Crunk ain't dead. And that was like a crunk man's dream. Like I had like the crunk all stars on stage, all mm-hmm. in one evening. And it then was, it was amazing. All right, mind you, I don't care about this. I don't care about this song. I really don't even care about this appearance, but just the audacity of having this person come out and perform this was the Monty. nail in the coffin to me. What's but that when Monty? Terrence freaking Howard came out and he perfect, perfectly, like perfectly, perfect. I should say, I said that all wrong. It's late. Per- it is late. Perfectly, nigga. I can't say it wrong. Add I can't that say to it. your lexicon. Perfectly, nigga. But perfectly, just recited the whole song. Words and I did like, like out the blue. 
Like, I was not expecting that at all. So I was like, you know, they had the audacity to actually bring this dude out. <laughs> and he, and he did the song. <laughs> they, yeah. My, this, I've seen a lot of things in the street. <laughs> This verses show every aspect of three six you could possibly get. That nigga brought out Lucy's life. <clears throat> but DJ, Mike, DJ. <laughs> you know they had to perform the Oscar winning hit. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to say this though. Um, we I want to give props to Lazy Bone because he perfectly hosted and like segued throughout the whole. Um, versus it seems like if if they got hit with something with three six he had like a perfect segue to go to the next one even if the song wasn't the song that hit at that moment he had like that perfect segue to go to it like gangsta boo came out with where them dollars at where them dollars at and then he said something next thing you know we got to get that paper 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 like he he really showed his showmanship and the way he keep like just kept the show going pretty much at, at the same time when wishbone would scream out randomly hey y'all we're just trying to keep the peace that wasn't us y'all he would just be so right loud one person to be there. yeah you know, exactly people don't, people don't often think <clears throat> about wish so he was just you know glad people were mm-hmm. them in the festivities true well Another person people don't often think about, but really wanted to get some attention. I wish he would shut up the whole time. Young Buck. Young Buck would not shut up from the time he came out to afterwards. He was just talking like it was his show. Just probably realized that (laughs) this is the only verses he's ever going to actually achieve or get to. So he just kept saying it over and over and over again. I got to tell you something, Young Buck. You haven't got your street points yet. I'm not the most street gangster person in the world to say that but according to other street gangster people <laughs> or whatever you haven't had your points yet to be doing that bragging that much bragging on somebody else's show that you're the guest on and you only got one verse up there really and then you kept talking and then they they brought a little flip out the freestyle little f- little flip out freestyles you because you say some old garbage crap at the end pretty much so you did all that talking and you would think somebody that would do all that talking will at least show out when it's when they give you another chance to shine not young buck not young buck whatever so young buck shut up it wasn't your verse it wasn't it really wasn't so you saying you really don't care for young buck or yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I gotta understand 50 Cent. I kinda understand. <laughs> at this point, I understand. He just would not shut up at all. You gonna make young <laughs> cry. You know he's prone to shed a tear. They they didn't even put his mic on. They didn't even put like a lot of the guest mics on all the way, like like I would say maybe lazy, busy bone, or um DJ Paul or Juicy J or whatever. We but even with lazy. his mic. <laughs> but I would say, even with with his mic off, Young Buck was still talking junk in the background. Like, why? Why? Buck and that was, was the fuck of the verse. Buck, Buck was happy to be there. I'm, it, it, well, it was obvious. But he surely said every... He surely... <laughs> I can't even talk. I can't talk. But he could talk. He could talk all through that dang tight. I'm glad they brought him out man. early. He was just happy to be included, man. Was, yeah, because he hasn't been somebody included. Somebody paid attention to Buck, man. Yeah, because they He's excluded. Like, oh, they included. like me again. No, we don't. The transsexual ain't ruined it. No, they, no, no, they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> well, man, actually, it was the camera tra- angle, Pat. It wasn't the transsexual. It was you that chose, like. And 50 cent. That's that's who really. But nobody, mm-mm. Nah. Nah. Mm-mm. And yeah, and that's souls and the good and fuckery, y'all. <laughs> good and fuckery. Versus. 
season two, episode 55.